So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, curl. I'm going to give you three examples. One for getting some XML, one for getting some JSON, and another for posting an array, and then just pretty much just um, we'll print back the array from the function that it goes to. But you could do anything with it. You could insert into your database or whatever you want. So, but we'll get into that in a sec. So. Well, I guess I'll go through what curl is, I suppose, just in case. So curl is a tool for transferring files and data. And um, I think it's one of them things that is is uh, not many people do videos or tutorials or anything on them. So it's just one of those things that a lot of people seem to use and a lot of um, APIs seem to use and, and all the rest of it, but there's never really any simple tutorial or blog post or anything, certainly that I've come across, so... It's one of them things I thought I'd do it. There are a few alternatives that all do pretty much the same as each other. Not the same as curl, but the, these three. So there's file get contents, file and read file. They're three PHP functions. File get contents, you pass it a URL and it returns it as a string. File, you pass it a URL and it returns an array. And read file, you pass it a URL and it will return the object, whatever it is, whether it be a web page or an image or, or anything else. But with curl, um, you can actually get some, you can get some um, error checking and all the rest of it. I mean, it's just it's just better. So let's go through this XML one to begin with. So with XML, not with XML, with curl, there are, there are four steps pretty much. Can be summed up as that. There's initialize, then set the options, then execute, get the result, like execute slash get the result, and then four is free up the curl session. So sorry. <sighs> Pardon me. So here we go here. We're initializing setting the URL, setting the options, and executing. So, what you can do this in different ways. I mean, you can put these in an array and pass it and all the rest of it. I mean, there's different syntaxes for it, but I've just done it like this because it's simple. It says what everything's doing. Um, you should always close it pretty much after you execute because you just want to free up the resources you don't know what's going on at the the URL especially if it's a third party URL that you're going to be accessing you don't know what's going on you know, so it's just free up as soon as you get the data back so this is XML so what we're doing is um, when the data is returned because we know it's going to be XML we're using this this is a PHP this is built into PHP I'll put a link to this and um, what we're doing is we're counting the amount of results and then we're going to loop through them so if I go to this URL now which I'm pretty sure I've already got up it should just say XML Gary well XML first name Gary last name George yes yeah, so I've already got it up I'll refresh that so that is this so what I'll do is I'll show you the function I'll show you this here so all of these three examples go to this same page data.php and then I'm passing this type and then depending on the type it goes into a different block so that type is XML so what we've got here is <coughs> I mean I'm not going to go through this creating the XML structure and stuff but it, I'll put a link to it it's all built into PHP stuff so um, what we're doing here is we're creating this XML but what really matters is this bit here. This is our data. The rest of it is pretty much standard, but this is our data here. And what you could have is if you wanted multiple um, nodes, results, whatever you want to call it, then you could um, loop through your database here. This could be in a while loop. So you could like while, well, I'm not even going to write, there's no point, but do you know what I mean? That could be a, a while loop or, or whatever. It could be anything. It could be, you're not limited to two. So like if I put, I could I could do that forever. Do you know what I mean, there's, there's, you're not limited. I've just done it like this for to make it quicker. 
which ironically is making me waffle on, making it fucking much longer, but just ignore that. Right, so anyway, so this is all it is then, really. And if we go directly to this page, which I've got open here, right, you can see this is the result, but when you view the source, it is actually, it's now like X amount, it's valid X amount. So that's that. Let's get rid of that. I mean, like I said, I'll put links to everything, so don't worry if, you, if I'm not explaining it too well. But And I'll give a link to this file as well these two files. So the next example is JSON, which I think JSON is definitely the way to go as opposed to XML. I mean XML is still supported, ev well, not everywhere, but the majority of places, but I, I do think a lot of big APIs are um, dropping support for XML. So yes, yeah, so we've got JSON, let's have a look. So this is all the same. You initialize, set the URL, options, all the rest of it. So here, we execute the request, close it, and then when the request comes back, we use this PHP function, which is uh, JSON decode. And what that does, what this does here, because you need this, it turns the, the JSON string into an associative array. So then, using that, we can loop through it, and we can get the results. So let me just go to that. So this should now change to JSON, and I think it's still going to say Gary and George, but that will change to JSON. So yeah, so let me show you in here. So that was XML. Here's the JSON one. So what we've got here is, I mean, I've added this metadata at the top. I've added it there as well as just a way of... Um, Letting the person, whether it be you or whoever else, is going to be is going to be making these requests. The metadata allows us to do this um, for loop, and we know how many results there actually are. So I mean, you could hard code that. I mean, that could say four. That could just be like ten, or whatever you want. But at least with this, you know that it's the exact amount of of results there. So anyway, so what we're doing here is um, build our array. And as with the XML, this could this could be in some sort of loop for me database or however you want it. So we do that. Then you, I mean you don't have to put this UTF-8 in code around this, but I, I do. I tend to do it because it just it just helps out. You never know what sort, of, especially if it's coming from a database. You don't know what sort of characters are going to be in there and all the rest of it, and you don't want it to break. Because I know that um, JSON decode can be really picky sometimes when um, it when there's uh, certain characters or, or anything else so just do that so what we're doing is this we'll build the array here then we're running this function json encode and what that does is it takes the array and turns it into a json string so if you think of it like this like we've got an array we turn it to a json string and then when we call it from this URL, we then change that string back into the array. So encode turns it into a string and decode turns it back into the array. And then we just simply echo it out. So if I go to that page, what am I doing? So if I go to that, just put JSON here, you can see it looks like this. And this could go on as long as you want it to, it could fill this whole page. So, yes, yeah, so this is it. So, again, I've got the metadata bit. That's just so we know the amount to loop through. Then here's what we care about is the result. And that's there. And then this is the same sort of thing. I mean, like I said, I'll give you the... I'm not going to keep going, talking and going through it and just making myself sound like an idiot and just boring everyone. So, yeah, I'll give the files away and then you can use it for whatever you want or not use it. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's pretty good. The the JSON one. It's definitely worth using, I'd say. So now, example three. So what we got here is we're gonna post an array using curl. We're gonna post an array using curl and we're just gonna print back the results. So 
yeah, all I've done is I've built a really simple associative array and I've just called it members so it could be like members of your site or I don't know so we've just got the array we're creating one member here just first name Gary last name George we're pushing this member to this array that's oh, a multi-dimensional array sorry this is an associative array but it'll be multi-dimensional because the associate array is going into that array but whatever I don't know so yes yeah, so we're just creating two members here doesn't don't really need to go into it that much and then here's the request so what we do is it's a little bit different on this one set the URL but then here we put this build HTTP build query function around our members array and what that does is it makes the array suitable for sending with curl I mean there are loads of other ways of doing it but this is one line well, it's one function really simple so here we set our we set our options these are a little bit different as well so what we're doing is we're doing this is letting curl know how how it's, it's well basically it's just doing a count on the array so we know how many separate items are there and this is um, the fields and the fields uh, is this variable called items and items is made using this here and then we execute it and then we close it so if I no comment that let me update that let's go to this this should just print an array yeah so here's the array of that So let's have a look at the function for that. <laughs> Shit, I forgot it was just that. Yeah, so all I'm doing is literally just printing out the posted variables and that is it. But what what you could do is now, I mean you gotta imagine, say say this was some it didn't have to be huge, but some form or some sort of contact form or, or something and so someone fills it out and then it sends the array off and then when it does this could be in inserting into the database it could be doing whatever you want sending an email out to the person who just you know it could be anything so um, yeah it's just one of them things that I think especially this posting an array is one of those things that doesn't really get covered anywhere I don't think so it's a handy little thing. You might need it, you never know. But yeah, so that's about it, I think. Don't need to go on anymore. What I'll do is I'll put all the files in the description and links to um, whatever I said I'd put links to, I can't remember. But yeah, all right.